Is there a mutiny at hand in the Atlanta United locker room? Let's take a look at what's been said and discuss next. What's going on, 5 Track fam? AJ here with you for an Atlanta United Fan TV News Special, where we get into some of the strong words that LGP, Barco and others had about the system clash that the Five Stripes currently have. Asked by reporters after the training session with the MLS All-Star team, LGP told the media, quote, Things have changed a lot. The way the club has played the game and we don't like it. We're working to return to the way it was before and how we characterized through and differentiated us apart from other teams. We're returning to that a little bit you're seeing a new face to the club. Now we have to continue working on that to fortify that. But we're professionals. We have to adapt to what the coach wants and what the sporting director wants and try to do things in the best possible manner because we share the same objective. Ezekiel Barco was also asked about the system change. It's been challenging for us because we stopped playing a way that allowed us to play more forward. Frank DeBoer came here with a plan that we're trying to get used to. We're applying it well on the field if you consider where we're at in the standings. So we have to continue adapting and trusting what the coach asks from us. Now, I won't read all the quotes, but you should check out the whole article by Mike Ramajo on MLSsoccer.com to get the full context. I'll link it in the description box below. But it seems like the players have been having numerous conversations with Frank DeBoer and the coaching staff. It seems like LGP was pretty much asked about the changes this year in that media scrum after training and LGP has been known to be candid and not to mince words much like other Argentines and really Frank DeBoer to be honest. Because of course DeBoer said PT Martinez was quote a danger to the team after the Montreal Impact match. PT Martinez then took to Fox Sports Argentina to say he didn't like the coach saying that and would have preferred the coach to have said that to him first instead of to the media or behind closed doors. To note though, the players have all shown respect to the coach. PT said, we have a good relationship. It's just what he said bothered me, but that was it. He's the coach and everyone has to get to understand his style of play and what he wants and we have to follow his orders. I'm aligned with that. The only thing that bothered me is that some things are better left behind closed doors. Joseph Martinez has also gotten in on this and was quoted before the LAFC match the other week saying, Frank's doing what he has to do with what he has, but in two seasons I never saw Atlanta United play defensively. We can't play defensively. Atlanta is a team that gets forward, and that's how it should always be. So is it much to do about nothing? I wouldn't go so far as to say that, but it seems like the Atlanta United players are being asked by media and they're just being forthright. And looking at a stat from the Mike Ramajo article on MLSsoccer.com, it showed the goals per game and the goals conceded per game in the three years that we played so far. And in 2017, with 2.06 goals per game and 1.18 goals conceded per game, it definitely is the most and the least in terms of goals and goals conceded. Now, in terms of goals per game in 2018, 2.06, but 1.29 goals conceded per game. And in 2019, a 1.65 uh, per game goal average with a 1.26 goals conceded per game. But also a stat brought up by Pacino on Twitter brings up some interesting talking points. He said, take what you will, after 23 matches in 2017, Atlanta United had 35 points, 42 goals for, and 30 goals against. After 23 matches in 2018, Atlanta United had 47 points, 48 goals for, and 26 against. And after 23 matches in 2019, Atlanta United has 36 points, 38 goals for, and 29 goals against. It's good to note though that in 2017, the Five Stripes and El Tata were dealing with the move from Bobby Dodd to the Benz. They had played a ton of matches on the road as an expansion side in their inaugural year and had to play the torrid stretch of games at home in September. We were also a side that finished fourth that season in the East. 
In 2018, it was pretty different, as El Tata and the Five Stripes seemed to have figured out how to play on the road for the most part, evidenced in the historic away record of 10 wins, and still were able to keep the fortress of the Benz. Having Miggy and Joseph clicking throughout most of the season definitely helped, and Almiron, of course, is a transcendent talent for MLS. The championship pedigree was, of course, evident. So far this year, it's been up and down with consistency. Growing pains with a new coach and a new number 10, injuries, fixture congestion. We've gone the furthest we've been so far in the US Open Cup. We were the only team to beat Monterey in the CCL. Still second in the tight Eastern Conference as of this recording, but the style and system is noticeably different and the players and fans alike have been vocal in their criticism. But we have to realize that stats without context are rather empty. In 2017 and 2019, the goals for and goals conceded are rather close, but I think it's the manner in which the goals are being conceded is the culprit in the difference. Now, Darren Eels and Carlos Bogonegra have both mentioned in the hiring of Frank De Boer, it was a move to keep the continuity of the system and the style of play. This is about evolution, not revolution, Darren Eels said after the hire. Both he and Bocanegra expected Atlanta to continue with their fast-paced attacking style under the former Ajax and FC Barcelona defender. Carlos Bocanegra said at that time, We're trying to build on the success we had over the past two years. We've got a style of play. We've got a philosophy. We've got a vision for the club. This is where we believe Frank can come in and continue to build on that and use his qualities where he fits in and gels well with how he likes to play and how he sees the game, how he sets up his teams to play, that high energy, high intensity passing style of soccer that we like to play here in Atlanta. It seems like the front office went into the hire with an idea of what they wanted, but at this point it's clear that ideal is at least a misfit with Frank DeBoer. Some fans have noted the slow possession and the lack of a clear pressing scheme. There are 17s preaching patience and 17s who want the gapper gone. Some have even voiced that the players need to stop talking and play better. I think it's somewhat healthy to air some grievances from all parties involved, because when asked about it by the media, I don't think they should keep it all under wraps. Fans can tell that there is a discord and this puts it out there so that the players, coaching staff and front office, basically the club, can find a peaceful resolution. If they can't, well, there could be some heads rolling, such as the reality of a football club. We weren't going to be on cloud nine forever, but some of us had hoped the party would have lasted a little longer. So what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I wanna thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.